Hi, I'm Rebecca Bidlack with the Institute for Justice. Today, we're going to talk about a case that touches on three out of our four pillars, economic liberty, private property, and the First Amendment. I'm here with IJ Senior Attorney Jeff Rose, and Jeff can explain a little bit more about how this works. Can you tell us about our clients, Joshua and Emily, and how their case covers all of these issues? Absolutely. Joshua and Emily are great folks. They're young entrepreneurs who decided to just fundamentally change their life according to their life philosophy. Um, They left San Diego and they purchased land for $9,000 in the remote high desert plateau of Yavapai County, Arizona. And they decided to build an eco-conscious tiny home and a rustic barn to host events in. Joshua is a professional photographer. It's a skill he picked up when he was in the army. Um, and Emily is a yoga instructor. In fact, they met together um, at Emily's yoga studio in San Diego, and they had both gone through substance abuse issues, and they pledged a life of sobriety together and a life of helping other people built around spiritual principles of yoga and vegetarianism and kind of eco-consciousness. They're great folks. They built this beautiful place, and then they ran into the Yavapai County Code Enforcement buzzsaw. So these entrepreneurs were trying to live out their American dream. What was this bus saw? What did it look like and what happened? Well, you know, they were a little bit naive. They came to Yavapai County. They looked around, saw absolutely nothing around them in the middle of nowhere, and they thought that they could just build what they wanted like pioneers. Um, but it turns out there are hundreds of pages of zoning regulations that apply to them. When they discovered this after building their barn and a rustic teepee and their tiny home, they realized, okay, we're going we're gonna to comply. We're not putting up a fight. We understand we made a mistake. Um, But one thing Yavapai County did that is amazingly unconstitutional is they said as punishment for your violations and to coerce you into complying with the code in the future, we're going to take away your right to free speech. You cannot advertise your business and we're not going to let you have people over to your property for potluck dinners and free yoga. So that's why IJ stepped in. So followers of the Institute for Justice are familiar with zoning boards and what they've done in the past, whether it's making people stop caring for the homeless or tearing up their vegetable gardens. Tell us a little bit about how this is different. Well, you know, this case is different because instead of saying you violated our code, bring your property up to code and pay a hundred dollar fine. They said you violated the code and stop engaging in a fundamental constitutional right until you've brought your property up to code. And so one of the big principles of this case is that the power to regulate land is the power to regulate land. It is not the power to strip people of other constitutional rights. Yavapai County can't tell Joshua and Emily not to engage in free speech until they bring their property up to code any more than it can say, you're not allowed to possess handguns. You're not allowed to go to church. You're not allowed to hire a lawyer until you bring your property up to code. So we know this land means everything to Joshua and Emily. Can you tell us a little bit, you know, we know that a lot of people are struggling right now with the pandemic. Has this affected them? Has this made it even harder for them? Well, Joshua and Emily um, were struggling to comply and get their business open before the pandemic. Joshua is a wedding photographer. Emily's a yoga instructor. Both of those professions involve people gathering. And so when the pandemic came along, it absolutely devastated their business, completely destroyed it. Um, And so it's more important than ever that they be able to resume their commercial speech um, to, you know, generate goodwill with the public, to identify potential clients so that when they get their property up to code and they're working as hard as they can to do it, um, they can open up. They have, you know, clients who will come in. And this is a, a really good example of how smaller entrepreneurs find the burdens of this kind of regulation much, much more difficult than big businesses. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for coming on and telling us how the Institute for Justice is going to fight back. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I'd like to people to think about how this case demonstrates how interrelated our rights are, that Joshua and Emily's desire to start a business is economic liberty, that they're starting their business on their own private property, and that's property rights, and that they need to be able to tell the public about it, which is free speech. Our rights don't exist in isolation, and regulating one can result in serious impairments to others. And so this case is about bringing all of those aspects together to vindicate um, all of the rights that entrepreneurs need to to lead their lives and run their businesses. Thank you so much for being here and we'll stay tuned to see what happens.